virtues of violinist El Subramaniam has always lived life on the road, spending sometimes up to eight months on the move. While his claim to fame has been his sometimes elegant, sometimes experimental compositions, what El Subramaniam has done best is build bridges between India and the West and between Carnatic tradition and the Northern Gharanas. Every concert is uh, important, whether you play in Bhopal or Mauritius or anywhere. So you try to focus more on the concert and the, what you're playing. And once you start playing, the sound takes over and you forget everything. But before and after, you do feel tired, you do feel uncomfortable sometimes. The fifth volume in the Sangeet Sangar series is out. That's a recording of a Jugal Bandi you did with the late uh, Ustad Bismillah Khan. What are your memories of him? The very first time when I met him, the way he behaved, the affection, the simplicity was there till the very end. He never changed, never changed. Even though he knew he was the best in his field, he was the I mean, greatest Shanaat player ever. Is this trait that you just described, is it unusual for, a, for an artist, for a musician to have? Some artists do have big ego, some artists do have. But the thing, he was almost like a saint, you know, in a way, you know, you say like Emma Subhalakshmi, for example. Mm -hmm. She was uh, very simple till the end, from the beginning, even though, you know, she, everybody knew her. Anybody knew Carnatic music would know Emma Subhalakshmi. Anybody who knows North Indian classical will know Bismillah Khan sir. But then they were all like very few people who are in that category, who are greatest musician, but also truly saintly people to the point of not even, you know, uh, thinking what is going to happen tomorrow. Now all the reports that we read when after his death, inevitably there was this note about how this person died as he had lived, which is in penury almost. Why is it difficult to make a livelihood from such wonderful talent? You know, he did make, uh, he was one of the most successful artists. There are so many factors, you know, he was supporting a huge uh, number of family members. He was the only person earning. And second thing also, he was not like uh, a businessman in some ways. So some, many artists have, over a period of years, they have had people, they think about, you know, what to do when the retirement comes or when they're old. He was, he never, he was never had any business sense. Yeah, I'll tell you, when we invited him to do a major tour for my father's festival, I mean, I have Lakshminarana Global Music Festival, we do every year. So that particular tour, we had a lot of international artists. Everybody was flying from city to city. Everybody was staying in a five-star hotel. But you know, he was almost angry. He said, why do you want to waste your money? He said, I would not allow you to do this. I will come by train and I don't want five-star hotels. And he was staying in... But I need these ten people. The ten people, they were all sitting yeah. around him. Yeah. They were playing, mm. some of them playing, some of them... I don't know whatever it is, but he had this group of ten people. But he never, even when I said, okay, I'll at least three of you come or four of you come by plane because I'm taking everybody by flight. And Kansab, I like you to also travel by flight. Everybody is staying in five-star hotel. He, he said, no, I want this hotel, which was uh, very, very below average in some cases. And he was extremely happy. So he was like that. He never, uh, because he could have asked for anything. And also at the end of the tour, when I, because we agreed on some amount, I was so happy because he played for my father's festival. The entire tour, he came by train. So I wanted to give him extra. Mm -hmm. He, he didn't want to take any penny extra. He said, I don't want to waste your money. You said that most musicians uh, don't have a business sense. Some do. What about you? You know, any time I do music, I cannot segregate music from spirituality mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. If I'm very business-like, I would have continued medicine. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is that I find it interesting. You do, you do have a sense that you need to protect your talent and you need to understand how to monetize it because you have the rights to, uh, you know, you have Viji, um, Viji Records. The, the Viji Records was started in memory of my late five because, you know, I have done a lot of major projects. 
after a while once you lose the project then you know yeah. you lose the no no absolutely i'm saying it's a good thing because there aren't so many artists who understand that this this needs to be done isn't it because you're protecting your intellectual property so could it, it could I be did do it that way <laughs> the way i did i tell you why i did it i started my father's festival yeah and i want my father's festival to continue mm. irrespective of my presence mm. so maybe 10 years down the road or 20 years down the road god knows when or tomorrow if it should not stop because i'm not around i wanted to also record all the people who have because you wouldn't believe uh, this is one of the most popular or most important global music festival i've been able to bring uh, lord equity many win people like you know some of the greatest jazz artists john luke ponty george duke stanley clark everybody have played once you do the festival if i there's no uh, track record after 10 years if you don't record everybody forgets and also the fact it was started by vg after my father died vg said we will we'll start a tribute festival you said there are some there are some musicians who are egoistic who are, you know who 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 respond to the stereotype that you have about big egos talented people you know the artist artistic who, temperament yes so where where are you on that scale i would allow you to judge that but i can tell you one thing what's your self assessment you know i tell you um talking about business what you're tr- uh, trying to imply or say <laughs> many many times you know if i can play one concert one day sometimes i get five people calling or five opportunities to do one uh, one day i can do only one concert so i started uh, refusing concerts then they couldn't do it so s- subsequently somebody who was taking care of it started doubling and tripling the amount so that hoping that they will drop but it didn't happen but as far as ego i'm not egoistic i'm down to earth i know i'm what i am because of the music without music i'm zero and what i have got from music i cannot get it through anything else the happiness and inner peace i want to take you a long way back now many many years ago when you i mean your father used to play the violin was it therefore the natural choice for you to make no i my elder brother was playing the violin by dinathan mm. my sisters they were singing mm. so father thought i should sing also so when i was 2 years old i had diphtheria mm. so when i got diphtheria i think the doctors told my father i might lose my voice and things like that so he put me to different instruments my mother used to play harmonium and veena mm. so i learned a little bit of harmonium i learned a little bit of mridangam but then my father used to be my idol because he, i mean i wanted to be like him so he used to play the violin so finally when i was given the violin because since my elder brother was already playing the violin he thought it would be nice to do something else yeah. i should do something else yeah. but then finally when i got the violin i believe uh, from that time i just said this is what i want to do and i used to work hard and you wanted to impress him didn't you i wanted to impress him and also i wanted to make sure that he doesn't say that you you're not good in it go to another some something else or do something else so i wanted to be like him i wanted to play the violin so the moment you say el subramaniam you say fusion isn't it there are two things one is uh, because it gets a lot of publicity you know uh, with the enter here you know i'll tell you that from the last october to up till now about 99% of my performances has been classical traditional music i did one uh, thing with stanley clark george tube uh, as a fusion thing but the publicity it got you know everybody thought you know i'm doing that regularly <laughs> second thing is there are two sides to it one i play as a violin in a lot of things traditional thing the second thing as a composer many people approach me next month uh, i am doing a very big tour with uh, in lille france with a major orchestra i am doing like uh, classical concerts and couple of orchestral appearances with a very famous orchestra but already people know i'm going to play in france with this two orchestra and about 50% of the people only know i'm going to do rest of the thing as indian classical do you think that in india to be famous in india as a classical musician you need to be known abroad it's it's a cynical view even before i went abroad i used to play regularly in india and madras 
particularly South Indian music was very strong there. As I mentioned, the people whom I played with, Chembai and Mani Ayer, these people were some of the greatest musicians of all times. And I used to play regularly there as an accompanist. But going abroad and doing composition, and also the starting of the, the global fusion concept, I'll tell you why I start also. Because every time they were in the West, when they talked about music, they thought only Western music was classical music. So they referred to Western music as Western classical. Everything else was ethnic or under one roof as world music. But when you talk about world history, world geography, you don't segregate, you know, US and Europe as, you know, yeah. saying everything else, is, you include the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. It's a totally wrong thing. Yes. So we felt very bad. So at that time, me and Vijay, we thought, why not we start the concept of global music where a right composition for major orchestras with Western, with um, basically orchestras, Western classical orchestras, with choir. I did project with Berlin Opera. So where we had all the backup musicians and orchestras and choir, regular Western classical musicians, then we also had musicians from other classical traditions, even from China or Japan, and said, this is their classical tradition. This is your classical tradition. So the concept of global fusion was started at that time, early 70s, with me and Vijay thinking for that reason to educate people and say, you know, we are also playing classical, classical music. music. And our music probably one of the oldest and most complex traditions in the world. It's even, historically, it's even before the Western classical. Do you enjoy composing more or playing more? I love playing, but many times you hear these melodies in your mind and you have certain things happen in your life, so it becomes an expression for you. Mm. So you write certain composition. I did fantasy on Vedic chant when my mother died. I wrote a piece called Beyond when my father died. For Viji, I wrote a piece called Global Symphony, which was a concept, mm. which is almost like a, you know, requiem. Mm. So many times you, when something happens, uh, the nature or any particular event, give certain ideas, so hear certain thoughts, a certain a mood, create certain melodies, or you hear some melodies in your mind, then you start writing it and it becomes a full piece. You've made um, several mentions to uh, your late wife, your first wife, and it's obvious that there is this huge impact that she's had on you as a professional and as a person. You're now married to one of our, you know, one of our gems, one of our favorite singers, uh, Kavita Krishnamurti. How big is the shadow that Viji casts on your life? You know, whenever uh, in this particular situation, when we talked about my past and how I got into the fusion, that was the period, you know, I was studying in the US, did my master's in music. All those period Viji was there at the time. Then we started the festival when my father died. For a while, I didn't even play for a while after my father died, mother died, and Vijay died. But subsequently, you know, with Kavita is coming in, it has been one of the best things that has happened to me. For two reasons. One, she's one of the greatest musicians because people know her as one of the top film singers. But for me, she's beyond that because I'll tell you how I met her, because I was doing a project called Global Fusion Album. So I was looking for a singer, and also I was doing at the time a film. So I was looking for singers I didn't know her at the time, so a friend of mine sent me a whole bunch of tapes to listen. I heard a lot of tapes, practically everybody's tape. And but that particular voice, I immediately clicked and said, this is be beyond. Initially it was just music, and that brought us together. You couldn't fall in love with anybody who's not related to music, is it? You know, I didn't plan to fall in love with anybody. You know, it was... Uh, no, but is, is, it a, is, it a, is it a concept you would even consider? I don't think so. You know, I never planned to, I mean, love yeah, anybody no, or meet anybody. Yeah, yeah, I know. It I know, so happens you meet some people yeah. and uh, some people create such a powerful impact on you. Musically, she was a fantastic mm -hmm. singer. We started working and then the children loved her so much. Mm -hmm. And because they used to indirectly say, you know, whenever I was traveling, when she was a couple of times came to Bangu, they used to go shopping with her and everything. Totally, not only me, the children also had uh, very, very great affection for her and everything. 
So, and since then we have done so many things, which is a totally different new thing which has happened in my life, which I never thought will happen. kind of family, the one you were growing up in and now the one your children are growing up in, is not considering music an option at all for anybody? In fact, uh, my daughter Sita, she is doing yeah. final year law and she is just waiting to finish it because she wants to continue music. We are not have, have, you, have you told her to complete her studies because you became, you know, your parents asked you to think of another profession. I know Kavita is, um, you know, an economics uh, yes, graduate. graduate. Viji yes. was, uh, I think, a French... Uh, she was MA in music also. Formal education is a big... Uh, you put a premium on that in your family, isn't it? My father used to say, you can do whatever you want, but education will facilitate your thinking and understanding of different things in a different way, in a scientifically, methodically. So, as far as Sita is concerned, we said, okay, whatever you want, it's your thing, you finish the thing. But my second son loves music, Narayana. He writes poetry, he sings, but he wants to become a doctor. He just joined medicine. So, his line is he wants to become a doctor and also keep music, but he doesn't want to be like uh, primarily a musician. My third son, Ambi, wanted to be a primary musician. In fact, he played with me and did a tour in Europe and US. He's playing with me uh, in, again in France. So he has decided he wanted to be a violinist like me. Would you be disappointed if none of them wanted to be in music? Yes. You would be? Yes. Because, you know, the whole thing is what my father created. He made the violin a solo instrument, internationally accepted solo instrument from our tradition. His dream used to say, you know, if you're playing Indian violin, you should not play house concerts and make it like a little thing. You go and listen to many men, go and see Krapilli or major orchestras. Our violin should be played in that mainstream on par with those artists. So it's a legacy. Now, that if needs suddenly to be it continued. stops after my period, it'll hurt. It'll be sad for me and probably for my family too. When you're not playing music, when you're not thinking about music, when you're not composing music or talking about music or listening to music, what is it that gives you the biggest thrill? I know you're quite a water sports enthusiast. You know, I love water, I love mountains and nature. And recently we were in Mauritius, we did that uh, para gliding. We were up in the air because that's thanks to my daughter Sita, she wanted to do that. But I enjoyed it so much because suddenly you were uh, up in the air. It was like a parachute. You were sitting. You see the sky. You see everywhere just water, and absolutely there is a silence, which gives you, you know, a very, very beautiful feeling. In the week that we are speaking, there is this entire controversy about Vande Mataram. What is your take? It is a piece of music, beautiful lyrics and beautiful song. So if somebody loves music, I don't see why it should not be sung as a piece of composition. And second thing, you know, if you consider yourself as an Indian and if this is a national song, if people feel it's a national song, one should not hesitate to sing your own national song. You're saying that when it comes to Vande Mataram, there is no People need not be compelled to sing the song, and yet people should not feel think again. twice about singing if it. If they feel they are Indians, hmm. they should sing it because it's a what do, it is said as a national song. Whether it is a national song, if it is a national song, and as an Indian national, I don't see why one should not sing it. So they should feel for it. They should feel because I think what we lack in India. We don't feel we are Indians, first of all. First of all, we say, I am from, okay, I am a Tamilian, you are from Bengal, you are from, uh, you know, from Assam, you are from Kerala. That's what people are thinking. I'll tell you once, I was playing in Iceland, I never expected to see any Indian. I see uh, Sardarji in a concert, I was so happy. I went and had a long chat with him because I felt, oh, he's another, our country person is here. But that feeling has to be brought to our people. We are Indians first. 
think comes other things. You know, you have your own faith, your own belief, your own things, whatever your culture, whatever your parents have brought up, all those things should have, you should have roots. But first of all, you have to be an Indian. El Subramaniam, it was wonderful talking to you. Pleasure, my pleasure. Brought to you.